Uh, the question is how how has Malik been? How's he coming along? You know what? I I, uh, I like where he's at. You know, it, it's been a it's been a process. It's been a three year process, and Malik's finally at a point where one he's truly embracing that he is a tight end and everything that comes along with that. Uh, I'm really proud of how much he has improved in the, in the run game as far as blocking. And I mean, that's been his biggest struggle because we all know he's a big athletic guy, uh, but he just wasn't ready, in my opinion, the last couple of years for certain situations. And, uh, but I, I think he is now. You know, he's in a position to be, uh, to be that uh, main guy. I mean, you know, in position where, uh, you know, hopefully he doesn't lead the field too much. You know, so obviously we've got to continue work on our endurance and all those kind of things now that he's in that role. But I'm happy with where he's at. What do you attribute that sort of switch work to? Is it just getting older? Is it you drilling into him? I mean, what do you sort of point to and say, here's where he turned that corner to become every kind of I, I think uh, the, the, the question is, when did he, when did the light switch come on for him? I think uh, it's been a combination of all those things. I mean, because it's been a journey. I mean, those first, uh, you know, year, year one, I, I think it's probably about game eight that he finally played a little bit because he hadn't earned it. You know, year two, uh, he still wasn't a complete player. He's more of a role player for us. Whether he agreed with it or not, and trust me, he did not agree with it. Uh, uh, you know, he, he hadn't earned it. You know, so that, that, that's been a process for both of us. I mean, because uh, he'll be the first to tell you he probably didn't like me. And I tell you what, there's days I didn't like him. You know, but, but through it all, we, we, we found our way. And, and we're at a point where I think we understand each other, and, but I think he appreciates it now because he knows it was not given to him. And now I'm asking him to be a leader. I'm asking him to, uh, and he's doing a good job, by the way, at that as far as leading other guys. And I'm, I'm trying to teach him how to be a professional now. What can that do for an offense to have a guy who can keep people honest, so to speak? Oh, it changes us. Field. Yeah, it, it changes us, I mean, immensely. I mean, now you've you got to defend the entire field. Malik had a unique skill set. I mean, let's keep in mind right now, I think he's, he, I, I since I think, I know he's, he's too heavy right now, but you wouldn't know it. I mean, the other day, Malik met way 272, you know, and I'm saying, hey, we got to get that down, you know, so we can, you know, be, you know, be on the field a little bit longer. But for a big man, he can still move. There's not a lot of big people out there that can move like him. So he really has a chance, now that he's going to be a starter, to, to uh, really make a name for himself, really put himself in a position to do some great things. So I'm, I'm anxious to watch it. Is there, a way, is there a way to go for him? Well, I, you know what, I, 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 I would love for him to be, you know, that 265, 260, you know. But, but he, he proved my point. So when you talk to him, say, hey, Coach Gilmore told you a long time ago, you won't ever see 220 again. Yeah. And so here he is, you know. So last week joked that uh, he came in here and he said, I'm not a tight end, I don't receive it. You know, oh, and no don't question. It, how do you, especially with the way the game has evolved with the guys like the Jimmy Grahams and flank out like that, how do you get a guy to buy it? And what, what was your coaching process to bring him into that? Well, it, it had a lot to do with not playing much year one, not you know rotating in year two, and, and I think that got his attention that you know no, this is what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to do it all, and you have to embrace that. And once he truly embraced that, and, and one, he's at peace. You know, because he knows what he is. He knows what his future is. And, and, and now that I know that, uh, I know what my why is. I know what I need to do. You know, so it's, it's been a three-year process. Coach, as we celebrate the league and his evolution, you just kind of laid out the blueprint to his success. Is this normally the process for most big-time athletes that transition into high-level uh, college football, or is it still different for other people? No, it's, it's, it's no different. You're, you're going to always have that. I mean, you got to keep in mind, all these guys come out of high school, highly recruited. You know, they're the best at their school, and then they come here and they have to start all over. Some make that adjustment a little bit easier than others. And, and, and make no mistake about it, Malik had the ability day one, but it's all the other intangibles that I had to get him to understand. And, and that, that's where we butted heads at times. Because he can look and say, Coach, I'm more athletic than this guy. I can do this. Why don't I just, you know, why don't I just do all the pass? But no, you have to do everything. And if you're not doing everything, I'm not going to reward you. Is Buttonhead always a bad thing? No, no, it's not a bad thing. I mean, I've been doing this a long time ago. You know, for a long time, I should say. And it's not the first time a player just didn't disagree with me or didn't like me. I'm 56 year old. I don't need a 22 year old friend. So let, let, let's let's start there, you know. So I'm not I'm not trying to be his friend. I'm I'm here to tell him the truth, and and I think in the long run he appreciate that because I'm not you know, hey you know, 
I'm telling you what you need to do. I'm telling you what I see. You know, and then we can watch the tape, and hopefully somewhere in the middle we can come, we can get on the same page. But it's, it's not about telling him what he wants to hear. It's about telling him what he needs to hear. And, and trust me, there's been plenty of times I've stepped on his toes, his shoes, but there's also been times where I've been willing to shine. What about the uh, second scrimmage on Saturday? Just kind of what your overall thoughts were offensively, tight end wise. Uh, offensively, we're not where we want to be. Obviously, we still got a lot of stuff to clean up. We're trying to be balanced, and there's times it was able to be balanced, and there's times it wasn't. So that's that's ongoing. We got to continue to work on trying to fix that. As as, as uh, the, relates to the tight end position, I'm still trying to figure out. I'll, I, I know what Millie Carr is. Now I've got to figure out who the other guys are, what their role is going to be, and how they're going to help, so on and so forth. So that's my job between now and that first ball game is to really identify and make sure those guys clearly understand what their role is going to be and how they fit into the scheme of things. The three, so you got the three transfers, and then I was wondering, like, some of the, like, the Jack Nichols and Michael Miss and this type of guys, and just kind of what you see from, what individually would each of them bring? Because you got, obviously, some different body types. Sure, sure. And, and they all bring something different to the table, and, and that's the problem. They, they might be good in the past, they might be good in the run. I'm trying to find as complete player as I can, and, and, and that's where, the, the uh, that, that's what I got to figure out in the next couple of weeks exactly who's doing what because you know some of them may not necessarily be ready for this role but they are in this role and putting guys in the best position to be successful and like I said all of those guys are very competitive all those guys are very driven and hungry so the competition has been really good really good and and obviously I've had to grade every single practice just because it's that close and and at the end of it I mean that may have had a lot to do with who's doing what based on those grades just having an increased staff in your room is probably your deepest room since you've been here. Right? It, it is. How's that? How's that play? Well, it's the coach's best friend, you know. And, and I say it like that because obviously, uh, you know, you can't get held hostage, you know. And um, you know, by the same token, you have a guy like Malik Carr. So when I'm talking about trying to be professional, right now he's not threatened by anybody else. So if his slip is showing, I have to be the one to tell him. I have to hold him accountable. How many different styles? Oh, we, we got it all. We, we got it all. Obviously, you say Malik far as the pass, but making a slight Malik is big and strong. Malik needs to pass also. He needs to block also. So he needs to be a complete player. You you, you mentioned Mola. Mola right now, obviously, as, as he continues to learn, his upside is huge, big time upside. Running pass. You know, I just got to get a little bit better fundamentally. Yeah. You you have uh, you have uh, Evan Morris, who's put himself in position to help us in the run game a little bit. Evan might be the toughest guy in the room. You know, now just gotta we gotta help him stay here, and and not get too high, not get too low, and you know teach him how to hit that reset button. Uh, Jalen Franklin, obviously, came to us from Wisconsin. I've been knowing Jalen for a, a long time, and Jalen's a uh, very athletic young man. You know, and and Jalen is one as we continue to work on keeping the weight on him so he can hold up at the point. But he's very athletic and get in position. We gotta do a better job of catching the ball. Been inconsistent, inconsistent catching the ball. Uh, Jack Nickel is, 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 you know, right now can, can help us today in the run game. You know, he's very fundamentally sound in the run game and came here from Milton, and, you, know, you know, already knowing a lot of that. You know, so his, his background has helped him. Mike Masunas is ca playing catch up, you know, obviously coming off the injury last year. So we got to get his pads a little bit lower, get him playing a little bit more, a little, a little tougher, you know, and, but he's coming. He's a smart kid, you know, he, he knows it all. He's very, very, very bright young man. Uh, Tynell Hopper. Uh, he's probably had his best two weeks since he's been here. You know, he's he's finally you know seeing what we what what our and and what we envisioned as far as playing fast and playing physical and what he was. Now we're on the same page, and that's and his talent level has been coming to life. So he'll play a role, both run and pass. Uh, who did I miss? Uh, I'm sorry. Parachek. Parachek. You know what? Hey, bright future. That young man got a bright future. You know, hopefully I can keep him away from baseball. But he's got a bright future. I, I, I'm, I'm very excited about his future. So as a group where you feel like you're at in, in a run game, I was up here the other day and talked about it, the offense needs to run the ball better. You sort of started with the tight ends. I just wonder where your comfort level is or your confidence with that. Well, and, and you know what? Because like you said, we are part of extension the whole line. So we've got to do a better job. Last year, we didn't consistently block that C-gap well. You know, and, and there's been a lot of emphasis. And, and knock on wood, we, we won our share in camp. 
you know, and, and so we got something we can build on. But, you know, this is it's required, it's part of the job current you know, job requirement, I should say. So, you know, we, we just gotta keep the pressure on them. And they're taking pride in it. They, they really are taking pride in it because it's a mindset and it's something that we have to do to be able to run the ball. We gotta hold up our end of it. What do you think about the scrimmage on Saturday? How did they the group progress? Or anyone, did anyone stand out individually? You know, as a group, I thought they I thought they competed. Really did. They graded out well in, in the run game. Got target up, and that's the one thing I say about all of them. The, the mistakes, the minimal mistakes are down. You know, so we own the right people. Now I can coach on finishing. I can coach technique and, and spend time on that, but, you know, because they, they've really done a, a good job of what we talk about, the uh, the three A's, the triple A's, you know, assignment, alignment, and adjustments. You know, they, they've done a really good job of that. You know, so that really stood out that, you know what, we're, we're on the right people, we know where we're going, and, and now we can play fast, and now I can really focus on being more physical and technique driven. Coach, no more. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you.